I'm incredible. sure you're aware, but England did announce their team for the second test. Jimmy Anderson comes in for Mark Wood mm. and Shai Bashir gets his debut yeah, as nice, well yeah. for uh, Aaron Leach, nice. who is injured. Jimmy hoping it'll swing, I'm assuming. Well, we're, we're going to talk about the wicket now. I'm hoping our guest has had a, had a sighter of it. 4am um, tomorrow morning in uh, Vizag, the second test gets underway on TalkSport and TalkSport 2. Harsha Bogley is part of our excellent commentary team and he joins us now. Hello, Harsha. Hi, how are you? Uh, good, good, thanks, Harsha. Thank you. Maybe we, let's start with the wicket. What is the mm. word? Have you had a chance to to uh, take a look or what is the word and what sort of wicket we can expect tomorrow? No, I haven't gone out to see the wicket, but you don't need to. You know what it's going to be like. Vitrakapatnam is normally a good batting surface. There have been two test matches played here before. Both of them have gone to the fifth day. There's been a first-class game here where both teams have made 400. While it may not quite be that for the test match, I don't think that India would want a, a, a complete turner. So I'll, I'll be surprised if it is like that. But I've, I've, I've always said it doesn't matter what the surface is like. Both teams bat on it. No, that's, that's a great thing about Test match cricket. Yeah, that's very true. Now, um, uh, we, the absence of Kohli wasn't bad enough. Injury has, has robbed India of uh, Jadeja. There and you go. Kel I knew you were getting there. Yeah. You were well, getting I mean, there. So upset it, about it. It is, it, is ab- <laughs> it is absolutely huge. I mean, they're both very important players. I mean, I'd, I'd probably say Jadeja especially. Um, I and mean, what is the feeling going into this among Indian cricket fans? Are they a touch more pessimistic than usual? I suspect so largely because of the manner in which England played that test match, they will be. I mean, in, on, on paper, England shouldn't have won that test match. At the end of day three, England shouldn't have won that test match. So the manner in which it was it was literally grabbed away from India, it's almost like a burglar crept up and, and <laughs> while you weren't watching, took the game away from you. So, I, I mean, I say burglar because I've just been, I've, I've just seen the Hobbit movie. So, right. <laughs> talking about old, old, old Bilbo Baggins. But I think they'll be a little worried because I think they trapped the Indian spider in its own web. Mm. And we played with a lot of freedom. Mm. Now, Janita and Ashwin have been two of India's greatest ever spin bowlers, certainly on those surfaces. You're without one of those. K. Rahul made 80. He's been in great form. No Mohammed Shami as the second uh, seamer. Sometimes you can go into a test match looking at who you don't have. If England had gone into that test match looking at who they don't have, they wouldn't have won. So... Mm. In, India must take leaf out of England's book and say, right, who do we have? How can we win from here? We've lost first test of a series in the past, so we should be able to come back and win. I think it should be a good game. Yeah, I mean, England have gone into this series not expecting anything, really. Not expecting anything at all. And I think that's taken the pressure off. And almost the opposite is it is with India. How has the press been with them this week? Sorry, I, I, I might have lost you just a yeah. little bit there. I'm, we, I'm we, on a hotel internet line. It's yeah, fine. Charlie was just asking about the press coverage this week. How much pressure have the Indian players, how much criticism has there been of that performance mm. building up to this second test? There will always be. When, when you're a country our size and everyone's supporting you, it's great. But a lot of visiting captains have come here and said, can we make the crowds quiet? Can mm. we turn Indian crowds against India? Can we get them quiet for a start? And I think that that is what they managed to do. And so all of a sudden, I mean, so, social media should never be an indicator because social media is where people hide behind assumed names and vent their anger. But there's been a lot of talk about now suddenly, oops, hang on, how do we stop England? How do you stop someone who's not afraid? And I think, to my mind, that's what basketball is. Basketball isn't see the ball, hit the ball. Basketball is eliminate fear and back yourself. And how do you play a, a rival who's not afraid of losing. And I think that is a challenge India have in front of them. They'll need to start the game very well. Uh, and they'll need to get ahead very quickly. Because if you remember on that fourth morning, the, the shoulders dropped very, very quickly. It's it's very hard to replace players as good as uh, Jadeja and, and Kale Rahul. But who's likely to come in? What's your gut feeling? Who will be those, re- those two replacements? And... Uh, you expect them to step up to the mark? How good do you think they can, they are, the players that are coming in? Well, Washington Sundar was asked to step up more than once and he's done that with the bat. It all depends on whether India want to play the extra spinner mm. or whether India say the batting was the issue. Let's pick both the uncapped batters. That's, that's Sarfaraz, who's just knocked the door down. You know, 
they say the selectors aren't picking you don't knock on the door just break the door down mm. and and he's literally broken the door down in domestic cricket and rajat patidar has had a couple of very good seasons both very stylish players but the thing is they're both coming straight from domestic cricket where you do play spin a lot of the indian test players actually don't go back and play domestic cricket because of their commitments and they could be a bit rusty against spin sometimes so uh, so so they'll be ready uh india will probably play kuldeep uh, kuldeep yadav who's the left arm wrist spinner turns the ball both ways will provide uh, some some extra pressure and and then just hope england get a little uh, yeah. overconfident mm. and we saw india's batsman go after uh, Tom Hartley in the first innings. He, he, yes. I think it's fair to say he bounced back in the second. <laughs> so maybe they'll be saving that for Shay Bashir who plays his first game. And he's not played a great deal of first-class cricket. It's quite shocking when you look at just how much he has played. And yeah. the story that's emerged today of Ben Stokes saying that he just saw a clip on Twitter of him bowling and yeah. immediately put it on the WhatsApp group he's on with Rob Key and, and, and Brendan McCullum saying... Oh, this lad looks interesting. It's he could good, be good yeah. for us for India. It's lovely. It's lovely <laughs> to think that, that you can imagine like selectors sitting around in the fifties, smoking pipes, <laughs> pouring over county championship yeah. stats. Now it's a WhatsApp group. I know it is. And the other thing England have done very well is every single umpire in uh, in first class cricket where ca carries a camera. And that's linked directly to Hawkeye measurement. So you can see how good a player is against right. against extra pace, how a player builds an inning. So there's a lot of data. And there is Stokes. <laughs> and Stokes <laughs> goes by what the old pilots used to do. You know, when you didn't have radar, you just saw something and you landed there. Mm. He's gone by what his eyes have seen. Yeah, the eye test. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think that's what they've had. They've, they've asked Graham Swan, how good is he? They've asked Joe Root, how is he? They said, yeah, I think he's good. And then they've just put a pump and pulled all the all the fear out of a debut and said, go and play. And, and you mentioned Tom Hartley. India went after him in the first innings. Most captains at three overs for 35 would have taken Hartley off. Yeah. And 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 Stokes just said to me in the post-match press conference, post-match presentation, I had to get 25 overs out of him. I had to keep his confidence up. And he said he'd heard, Hartley had heard so much about how England are playing their cricket that we had to demonstrate that is how in, we indeed played. So I, I think it was one of Ben Stokes's finest hours as a leader. No, I totally agree. Yeah, he was a brilliant captain. So we saw that uh, as well with Rian Ahmed, who, who got, I think he went for 13 and over, mm. and he took him off, but he went out and saw him and said, I'm going to switch ends, you know, you're coming back on. He yeah. just didn't leave him out there stewing on a bad over. And I think that's very good captaincy, Harsha, isn't it? It, it is because... I think the players realize that their captain is a friend, their captain's with them, and their captain is trying harder than them to make them play well. I distinctly got the impression when Hartley was bowling in the first innings that Stokes rated Hartley more than Hartley rated himself. Mm, yeah. And that can happen when, when, when you're starting your career. You're uncertain, you're insecure, you're up in a land where spinners haven't always done well visiting spinners, you're up against a team that hasn't lost a series for 11 years, you're bound to be nervous. And that's this young kid, 20 years old, who's hammering you all around. But Stokes stayed with him. And I think sometimes, and I've seen that in my career, I'm sure you've seen it in yours. Maybe there's been a benevolent producer who rated you more highly than you did yourself and kept backing you. And I think that backing was what made Hartley. But now, the expectation is on Hartley. Now yeah. people expect him to do well and that'll be the next challenge for him excellent well we're looking we're looking forward to a, a test in india far more than we usually do no, no, i've got yeah, to be honest yeah. it all gets underway tomorrow morning 4 a.m i must tell you something else though mm. before you go where the yeah. last of the test matches is in dharamshala and at the moment it is snowing there oh lovely fantastic <laughs> brilliant fantastic. it's not only in england it is snowing <laughs> up in the north in the hills here too wow oh, yeah. that will be great a little layer of snow. tank top on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, Harsh. We'll hear from you tomorrow. Cheers. Thank Harsh you. Harsh Bogley there, one of our excellent commentary team bringing you that uh, test series. Going to put some of my bowling on Twitter, I think. If that's, yeah, how, that, if that's how they're picking Stokes, the England Some of your slow now. left arm. But some, <laughs> some of your village. Some of that England. village stuff, the yeah. trash I bowl, get, get wickets, you know, it might. It's interesting, Arsh, you're saying, picked. you know, you've probably experienced in your life having a producer that, that, that sort of rates you more than you rate yourself yes. and supports you through everything. Yes. Trouble is, we've got a, a producer at the moment who undermines us at every yeah, turn. Yeah, every single it? turn. I mean, he, he openly not even listening to the show. He's not even listening. Not even listening to the show now. We could say anything, Paul. At the moment. We I could mean, say we anything. Could. Talking we could about. We swear, like, 
sailors for we, five minutes. We wouldn't minutes. have to put the dump button on or anything. Look at him, not even he's listening still, to he's the show. He's chatting to someone in the studio. He hasn't yeah. caught any of this. Unbelievable. He has there done an absolutely terrible job. So when you need job. a producer that backs you more than you back yourself, yeah. not the person. That's right. Not the person. Well, hopefully he'll get a chance to listen back yeah. to this it in the podcast. This might be in Clips of the Week. You never know. I'll be insisting it's in it, but he really has been a very, very poor producer for many years now. I've got absolutely no idea how he's still in this show has really yeah. dropped. Really. Anyway, yeah, he can listen back in the podcast. He can listen he, back to he that. He wasn't listening then. <laughs> Charlie just libelled eight people. <laughs> there we are. Um, so, uh, still to come, we are talking transfers once again. Keep you in touch with the window. Matt Lucas and Andrew Mensah popping in from Fantasy Football League in the final hour as well. We're here with Toolstation. Join today for the chance to win a holiday worth five grand in the Toolstation Club. 18 plus T's and C's apply.